टूडेज टॉपिक इज ऑन बॉडी फ्लूड्स और फ्लूड कंपार्टमेंट्स इन आर बॉडी सो बिफोर एंट्रिंग इन टू आर टॉपिक लेट मी आस्क ए क्वेश्चन डू यू नो दैट मेजर पार्ट ऑफ आर बॉडी इज मेड अप ऑफ वॉटर वेल इफ योर आंसर इज येस वाओ दैट्स इन डीड ग्रेट बट इफ योर आंसर इज नो डोंट वरी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेम सो लेट्स बिगिन आर बॉडी इज अ कॉर्डिनेटेड सोल्यूशन सो वॉट यू मीन बाई सोल्यूशन इट्स प्योरली केमिस्ट्री सो अ सोल्यूशन हैज टू पार्ट्स अ सॉलिड पार्ट कॉल द सोल्यूट एंड अ लिक्विड पार्ट कॉल द सॉलवेंट so together they form a solution so our body has a well coordinated solution system body fluids or fluid compartments refer to the body water content or level body water level it makes up about 60% of our total body weight so suppose a person weighs about 100 kg so in that 100 kilograms about 60 kilograms is the weight of our body water content and the remaining 40 kilograms is just of the solid part okay so the major part of our body is filled with or is composed of water so as i said earlier it is composed of water as well as electrolytes i hope you all know what is an electrolyte so moving on to the classification of body fluids it is divided into two parts as intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid intracellular fluid refers to the fluid inside the cell the cell is the basic structure of the tissues or organs so the fluid inside the cell is called intracellular fluid and the fluid outside the cell is called extracellular fluid so i said about 60% of our total body weight is the body fluid so in that 60% intracellular fluid forms almost 40% and the remaining 20% forms the extracellular fluid the extracellular fluid is again divided into two parts as plasma or otherwise known as intravascular fluid and the interstitial fluid interstitium refers to the spaces in between the cells and the fluid seen in those interstitial spaces is called interstitial fluid okay so the plasma or the intravascular fluid is the fluid part of blood blood i hope you all know it is a fluid seen in our blood vessels that transports various nutrients um oxygen carbon dioxide etc anyway so in that we can see rbcs wbcs and platelets that form the cell component and the fluid part is called the plasma it is otherwise known as intravascular fluid so that and interstitial fluid form the extracellular fluid so the entire body of the entire body fluids 2/3 of the body fluid forms the intracellular fluid and the remaining 1/3 forms the extracellular fluid so this picture also shows the same so 40% is made up of solids and the remaining 60% is made up of fluids so of that 2 by 3 or 2/3 forms the intracellular fluid and 1/3 forms the extracellular fluid extracellular fluid is again divided into two as interstitial fluid and the intravascular fluid or the blood plasma this picture also indicates the same or shows the same 
and this is the pi graph other fluid refers to a term called transcellular fluid they are actually transcellular fluid they are seen in the epithelial lined areas like urine then lymph seen in the lymphatic vessels then cerebrospinal fluid seen in the brain then synovial fluid seen in the joints etc they form the transcellular fluid so they constitute the other types of fluids okay so about the description part extracellular fluid it is seen outside the cells and it moves between the major compartments this ecf is always circulating within our body and the volume of ecf is the most important regulated aspect of our body fluid balance and without adequate ecf the body cannot maintain a normal bp and if there is a drop in bp it will of course affect oxygen utilization or oxygen transport and even the transport of nutrients which finally leads to a condition called hypovolemic shock we'll be discussing about this topic in another context anyway so it is very important ecf is very important because our cells literally live in ecf and it is circulating and is seen everywhere so the maintenance of ecf is very important and it is mainly maintained by the kidneys then brain pituitary gland and to some extent by the heart so it includes the interstitial fluid and plasma interstitial fluid is seen in between the cells then specialized extracellular fluids called transcellular fluids are seen within epithelial lined spaces transcellular fluids are synovial fluid synovial fluid is the fluid seen in the joints then csf or cerebrospinal fluid which is seen in the brain then aqueous fluid in the eye bile which is formed by the liver then digestive juices seen in stomach small intestine etc urine etc these are the transcellular fluids and their chemical composition is ions ions mainly sodium chloride and bicarbonates then oxygen then nutrients like amino acids which are the building blocks of proteins then fatty acids for fats and glucose of carbohydrates and the waste materials like carbon dioxide etc so this is about the extracellular fluid and about the intracellular fluid it is seen inside the cells and acts as stabilizing agent for the parts of the cell and helps to maintain shape of the cell so it is seen inside the cell so it helps to maintain the shape of the cell and it also assist in transport of nutrients in and out of the cells and their chemical composition is water with ions ions mainly k plus that is potassium then magnesium phosphate etc so sodium ions and potassium ions are very important and these two ions are seen in the extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid respectively sodium ions are seen more in the extracellular fluid and potassium ions are seen more in the intracellular fluid but it doesn't mean that sodium ions are literally absent inside and potassium ions are literally absent outside the cell it doesn't mean that but the number of sodium and potassium ions in and out of the cell is very different or very what to say 
it's uh, extremely different so the num uh, the concentration of sodium ions outside the cell is greater whereas the concentration of potassium ions is extremely great inside the cell okay so that's what this picture shows so in the ecf we can see sodium ions then glucose etc and the icf potassium ions are seen in major component and their transport across the cell membranes are also very important and the transport of materials across the cell membrane will be discussed in another video so for time being let's complete our topic and we'll see with a new thing in the next video thank you